Hey YouTube, welcome back to another Disney Era Raging. This time I'll be talking about a very interesting era in Disney's history, which is the Bronze Era. This era went from 1970 to 1988, and it was after Walt died and the company mourned his death. They really didn't know what to do with their movies and were very confused. In the 70s, the movies they released were moderately successful, but they weren't as successful as the movies in the past eras. Then in the 80s, most of the old animators left and new animators came in. And the movies they released were moderately successful like the ones in the 70s to almost out bankrupting the company due to how unsuccessful they were. And then, yeah. This will be a very interesting era to rank for me because I'm going to be comparing different movies from two different teams of animators and comparing them against each other. And then, it also is an interesting era to rank because most of these movies have a big cult following and have lots of fans. So with all, all of that out of the way, let's rank these movies from my least favorite to my most favorite. Number 8, The Aristocats. So I find this movie bad, but I don't find it as bad as something like Sword in the Stone or Make My Movie. It's more bad in the way that it feels like a ripoff of 101 Dalmatians, but this time in Paris. So, I don't really remember any of the characters, personalities, and even then, the ones I remember were not that likable and or not that memorable. So, any, they don't serve any purpose to the story. I don't think the villain was that cool, he's just a butler, kind of cowardly too, but not in an enjoyable way. I think the story is a rip off on our Joel's Dimensions, like I just said. So, yeah. Some of the songs in here are pretty good, though. That's like the only positive I have about this movie. Like, it's a bad movie. I only watched it for this ranking here, and I have no interest in ever revisiting it again, because it was that bad to me. So in conclusion, I think The Rest of Cats is a bad movie that I don't have a lot of thoughts about, but hey, it was better than Sword in the Stone and Make My Music, which is more than I can say about this movie. Number 7, The Fox and the Hound. So, in the making of this list, this movie was way higher on the list. But when I really thought about it, I realized this movie is really boring to me. And I don't find a lot of things interesting about it. So the first flaw of this movie for me is that the title friendship between the fox and the hound was not developed the way it should have been, in my opinion. Like the only really bond with each other and talk to each other for a few days and we're supposed to believe like they're lifelong friends or something when they've only talked for a few days. And there's this female fox later on in the movie that the title fox falls in love with and I feel like there's a stronger relationship between those two than the fox and the hound. And I don't think the songs in here are that memorable with me struggling to remember any. I also think the animation is not that great, except for one scene I'll talk about later. So yeah. The only two positives I can say about this movie is that there are some scenes I like. One of them is a bear scene with this bear that has really cool animation. It is probably the most interesting thing in here, to be honest. And then the second f positive for me is that there's a scene with the owner of Todd the Fox dropping him off in the forest and giving him up and it is a really well done emotional scene for me. So, in conclusion, The Fox and the Hound is a pretty boring movie with nothing that really excites me or interests me that I only put over the Aristocats because there are some good scenes in it that the Aristocats lack. It is a boring movie, but hey, maybe you will like it. I know there are some people who like it. Maybe I'm just not the audience. Number six, The Mini Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Okay, okay, don't hate me for putting Winnie the Pooh this low on the list. So the reason this movie's low on the list for me is kind of complicated, and I'll explain it to you. So the three shorts in this movie existed before this movie came out, and they were successful in their original run. And Disney was very desperate for success in the 70s, so they just bundled these three movies together. Three short movies, I should be saying. But, so while watching this movie, I feel like I am watching three episodes of a TV show. 
and not a future movie. So that's why I don't like it. I just don't like it because the existence of this movie is lazy. But the shorts by themselves, I really like. I think they're charming, I think they're cute, I think they have great characters. I mean, Silly and the Pooh, we all know that's great. I don't need to remind you. But this movie, its existence is not great to me. It is just like a lazy, like, cash grab, I would say. Because they just compile free shorts together. So yeah. Winnie the Pooh is a movie that I would watch the shorts alone by. But I would not watch this movie. Because I would just want to watch shorts. It's a movie that isn't that great of a movie. But a good episode of a TV show. To cash on. Number five, The Rescuers. So like movies I mentioned before, I think this is another average movie from another average era. So the first thing I like about it is that this movie has a very unique and dark melancholy tone. I find it dark and melancholy because it has the theme of wishing for better days to come and takes place in a dreary location. I also think Bernard and Bianca are very likable and interesting main characters. I also really like the idea of a team of World traveling mice saving children from across the world. I really like that concept. It's nice and imaginative. And the things I don't like about the movie. So first off, I don't find the animation that great. Just looks average. Nothing special, but nothing really bad. Kind of like the movie. And I also think the swamp is kind of a waste of the whole world traveling mice concepts that I love. Because, like, of all the world biomes to go to, you want to go to a swamp? Really? Why not go to Australia? Oh, they do that in the next movie. Forgot. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, and also, I don't think the villain's that interesting. She's just a copy of Belle the Bell. Because she's just another money-powered crazy lady. And yeah. The so The Rescuers is a movie with a great concept, great characters, and a great dark and melancholy tone. But the things I don't like about it are the copied villain, the very uninteresting setting, and the uninteresting animation. It is a movie with good parts about it and bad parts about it that make it average. It's another average movie from another average Disney era. Number four, Oliver and Company. So this is a yet another average Disney movie from this era. But I think it's the best average Disney movie from this era. <laughs> So the first thing I like about this movie, I like the setting of New York in here because it is a more modern setting than, and more unique than most of the other fantasy settings that Disney does. Like, a movie taking place in New York is pretty cool. That's like something you'd see in a DreamWorks movie. And I also think a mob boss is a very interesting choice for a Disney villain. Because you got wizards, you got witches, you got monsters, and you have a mob boss. How interesting is that? So yeah. And I also think the songs in here are really good. Like, well, some of them read about Billy Joel. Like, that kind of explains it. But my point still stands. And I also think that this movie has a good heart. With some, with it having some good emotional moments. But the emotional moments and the good heart kind of lead to a flawed movie for me. So there are some corny scenes in this movie. Like, Oliver having fun with his owner. Like, those scenes are just so, like, corny and just too sweet that I just wanted them to be over. I also think there are some dislikable characters in here as well. I mean, there is this one Mexican chihuahua who, like, is trying so hard to be funny and being the comedic relief of the movie. But feels so hard. Like, I just want him to show up, shut up most of the movie. And there's this one poodle named Georgette that I really hate. Like, probably one of my least favorite Disney characters of all time. Like, she is, like, very narcissistic and showy, and I usually hate those type of people slash characters. And you can get why I kind of hate her because of that. And she also has her own song, which is the worst song in Disney history. It is, like, it just goes on forever. It doesn't have like any like impact on the story it's just horrible like i thought twitter painted and the animal scenes in sword of stone are bad i have seen nothing until this song so yeah oliver and company is a 
average movie with a good heart, a good and unique setting, and some good, a good villain. So yeah, and I also think it suffers from corny moments, very dislike and very dislikable characters. Oliver Company is an average movie, but it's the best average movie on this list. Number three, The Black Cauldron. So this movie to me is way too hated and way too loved at the same time. So the first thing I love about this movie, I think it has a very cool, unique 80s Lord of the Rings dark fantasy style that I think re is really cool and unique from the rest of Disney's library. And I think it really works well here. And I also really like The Horned King. Like, he is a very cool villain, like, just, like, due to how intimidating, like, dreadful and, like, scary he is. And, like, he has a unique, very cool, like, voice and design. It, he's very cool. He's in my top five Disney villains, which could be a possible video, believe it or not, coming in the future. Oh, uh, where was I? Oh, yes. And I also think the animation in here is really good. Honestly, I honestly think it's some of the best animation in this era, and I think it's on par with Silver Era animation. Yeah, I just said that. I think the animation here is pretty good. And I also like some of the characters, like the Horton King sidekick, the witches, and Fluter Flam. That's a very weird name. And, but the things I don't like about the movie. So first off, there are some very dislikable characters in here. Like, main character Tarin. Like, he is just like, a normal like hero stereotype and can be very annoying and rude sometimes. And there's this princess named Alonwi. She is just a, a typical female stereotype. Like she isn't really well written at all. And there's Gurgi. I hate Gurgi. He's very, very annoying. Like he has one of the worst voices I ever heard. Ugh. I hate Gurgi. There's a scene near the end of the movie that where he has to sacrifice himself to the cauldron and like during that scene I was shouting, Yes, go into the cauldron. I want you to die. I hate you. So yeah. <laughs> okay, anyway. Yeah. And I also think this movie has very weird storytelling sometimes. Like we don't know what the Horn King's motivation is for getting the cauldron and we don't know why the, how the witches got the cauldron. Like, we were just supposed to roll fit, and I find that very weird. So yeah. The Black Cauldron. Has some great characters, has some great animation, has great ambitiousness, and a great unique tone to it, and yeah. I love those parts about it, but I don't like the characters and the weird storytelling. It is a movie that I find better than mo most people think, but worse than the people who say that it's great do. Number two, The Great Mouse Detective. So I know this movie is not the best of Disney, but I still find it very fun and entertaining to watch. So the first thing I like about this movie, I think Basil is a very cool detective character, which is, who is very fun to watch due to his daring personality and problem solving skills. And I also think the villain Radigan is very cool to watch because he has this very delightful evil personality about him that just makes him very fun to watch. And, which is a surprise because he's voiced by Vincent Price, which is always great in the evil voice, you gotta admit, but he's especially good here. And, yeah. I also like how this movie balances a dark yet cartoony tone. An example of a cartoony tone in this movie is that the main villain, Radigan's plot is to build a robotic queen so he can become king. And the dark tone of this movie is... In scenes like, for example, there's this bar scene with has a lot of references to the mafia and alcohol in it. So I like how they balance like, yeah, a cartoony yet dark tone. So my problems with the movie. There is this very weird scene with this like mouse lady that's like very weirdly sexualized for some reason, and it's just very uncomfortable to watch. Well, at least for me. And also, I think the animation here is pretty cheap, and it feels like it was made for TV, which it may be due 
to the cartoony tone of the movie, but something about it feels very cheap to me, like I should be watching on TV. But the story feels cinematic enough that where where that I'm not having the same problem as I was with Winnie the Pooh. So yeah. And I also think the movie should have been longer. I think it should have been longer because I feel like there should have been more clues leading to the whole suspect and conclusion of the story. And one positive I forgot to mention was that there's this really cool scene in Big Ben that probably has the best animation in the movie. It's like this really cool fight. Like, and it's very cool to see Big Ben in a more smaller perspective. So yeah, I think Grey Mouse Detective is a really fun and good watch. It's the first movie in here that I would recommend. And although it has its problems, I think it's underrated and I would recommend you watch it. Number one, Robin Hood. So this is the only movie on this list that I would say I like slash love to watch. I say that because I have a variety of reasons for liking it. So the first major positive about this movie is that I really like the anthropomorphic world of this movie. Like, and I like seeing how all these different animals coexist with each other. Which is similar to Zootopia, just further down the line. And I also really like the main character of Robin Hood, because he has a very daring personality that is very fun to watch. And I would say some of the Basil, like I just mentioned, or Jack Sparrow. So yeah. And I also really like how this movie balances free villains. And makes them all enjoyable to watch. I like Sheriff from Nottingham due to his sudden accent. I really like Sheriff Hiss due to his comedic timing. I really like Prince John because of his, like, very funny lines and really good animation on him as well. Good character animation, might I say. And he's probably my top 10 Disney villains. I, I basically remember every character's personality in here and like them all. So yeah. And also, there's this very cool climax of like a castle burning and like, it has really good action for an animated film. And yeah, it's just very cool to watch and kind of like, edge of the seat, like climax. The, so, the first major flaw of this movie for me is that it has like really like rough animation. And like sometimes like they recycle animation from different movies and can kind of be tiring to watch animation from movies you've already seen. So yeah. But aside from that though, Robin Hood is a great movie that is probably in my top 20 Disney movies, not in my top 10 due to the flaws I just mentioned. It's a really good movie that I really recommend you watch and is my favorite of the Bronze Era. So that was my list for the Bronze Era of Disney. And man was this a mixed bag of air to get through. Like there were only two films in here that I would really liked and would recommend you watch and others were just really average or really bad. So yeah. But luckily for me though, there is a way better era coming up with lots of great films that are people say are masterpieces. But until then, I'll see you next time.